You are listening to Connections, a place to learn about and celebrate creative approaches to healthcare, education, and wellness. Each week, we explore new ways that creativity can reach and connect individuals in all stages of health and wellness. Join us as our host, Bree Gordon, board-certified music therapist and managing partner with the Palm Beach Music Therapy Institute, interviews professionals, volunteers, and community members from healthcare and educational backgrounds. If you are at home or near a computer, you can join us via live streaming video at facebook.com slash connections by Aria. We hope you enjoy the program and find new ways to bring the joy of creativity into your life and the lives of those you love. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. You are listening to and watching Connections. I'm your host, Bree Gordon, board certified music therapist here locally in sunny, beautiful South Florida with the Palm Beach Music Therapy Institute. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time, I'm so glad that you found us, whether it's at 95.3 FM, 1470 AM, or on our Facebook Live channel at facebook.com slash connections by Aria. Uh, if you are home in front of a computer or your phone safely, not driving, um, and are able to access Facebook, I hope you will check us out live on there. I love interacting with our guests um, via the Facebook Live. Leave a comment. I check it during the commercial break. Love to hear your questions, your stories. Uh, you can also call into the show, 888-565-1470. I, again, I, I love learning from you all, just like I love having the opportunity to be in this studio every single week and learn from my guests. My guests, uh, each week I have the honor of interviewing and learning from individuals, uh, professionals, volunteers, community members, parents, family members, uh, caregivers, everything in between uh, that are, are seeking out creative, outside-of-the-box ways to reach, connect, and comfort people in our community and beyond. So a lot of times we have someone here in the in the studio with us um, to to talk about some programs that are going locally in our community. But last week was a really cool opportunity. We got to talk to someone, uh, Pete Capel, uh, um, Power of Play out of Knoxville, Tennessee. And for our Halloween edition, was talking about making these incredible costumes specifically for kids uh, with limited mobility who are um, more comfortable or, or only able to get around mobility-wise through the use of a wheelchair. And so talking about how to make Halloween fun and accessible and inclusive for these kiddos, uh, one way that he did that and with his team was to create these incredibly creative costumes. And what I really loved about what Pete was sharing on last week's show, and if you missed it, you can go to our Facebook Live page and, and check out that and all past shows archived there. Um, what I really loved about what he shared was oftentimes, you know, these kids uh, are in a room or in a situation and they become the center of attention for a reason that they're not super comfortable with. Um, and so rather than helping them just blend in and be like everyone else, his goal was to make them stand out for the best reason uh, and, and for them to be almost the envy of their friends, how cool, you know, their costumes were and, and could be. And again, it just it takes that creativity. It takes that compassion and that time to really uh, think outside of the box and also to partner with different people in your community that have that like minded goal. So that was one of my favorite shows, uh, honestly, last week, that conversation that we had with Pete. So, again, I encourage you to check out that and all past shows, in case you missed any, um, on our Facebook Live page. Kind of sticking with the mobility theme today, got a really cool program to talk about that is pioneering here locally in Broward and Palm Beach County in South Florida um, that is helping increase independence for people in our community um, through the use of uh, d different transportation programs. And I'm going to let my guests talk more about that later, but I, I love these programs that are popping up, um, and, and we really live in such an incredible place for this to be happening, and, and hopefully the programs that we're seeing starting in Southeast Florida can be a model for the rest of the country. Um, but these are a lot, a lot of times pilot programs or something creative and different. Um, those are the individuals I love to have on this show. And what I love about what they're sharing, um, whether it's talking about uh, advances and innovations in healthcare or education or community building or whatever it is, what I love is that they have these great ideas, they have these creative ideas, and not only do they want to uh, talk about it, right, and talk about the benefits of it, but they're also sharing those ideas with others. I love this. You know, I love that I'm, I'm in a field as a music therapist that that sees the value in sharing best practices um, rather than holding on to things, 
you know, and saying, this is a great thing that we're doing and it's reaching a lot of people and it's doing all these benefits, but I'm going to hold on to it. Um, uh, this one of the things I really love about this show and, and why I really emphasize with the title Connections is we want to connect our audience, the community with these resources that are going on, but also other professionals and volunteers to to learn from these best practices and be able to share these uh, even beyond our area. So again, one way we're able to create these connections is to hear from you, the audience, uh, whether that's again on Facebook Live channel or calling into the show. This is a great honor for me to be able to make uh, some of these community and professional connections. And some of the coolest things happen after I wrap a show on Wednesday night and get a call or a text or a Facebook message from someone that says, hey, that, that, um, you know, kidney transplant program, I'll never forget that, that you just talked about on the show. I really want to learn more information about that. Someone in New York was reaching out about that. Or, you know, a, a professional in the area called into the show and, and won an adventure therapy um, group program for their staff and then later reported on how it really helped their team with rapport and team building just because someone came on and shared what they do. It's incredible. It's incredible when when people are are using their creativity to to be out there in the world to try something new to reach people. And then not only that, not only are they benefiting their their clients, but they're benefiting the whole community when they share it. And so again, just so thankful to have this platform to share good news. Isn't it nice to just take even an hour out of our day to just focus on good news? <laughs> The good things that are going on, there are. There are so many good things. There are so many good people. There are so many good programs. There are so many good neighbors out there doing wonderful things. And I really just feel thankful to have this opportunity to meet these people and to share these people with you, with, with our audience. So um, I, this is a, I've been talking about this for a little while now, but really November is, is the month that I try to hone in on this idea of gratitude. You know, with Thanksgiving coming up and before we get into the hustle and bustle of all the holidays and all the travel plans and all the responsibilities, and um, it's just good to take these next few weeks to just slow down and to count our blessings and to appreciate the people and the things in our lives that we're so thankful for. And I try to pass it on to my clients, my patients as well. So um, as you know, usually on Monday nights, I'm fresh off a, a day of, of several different sessions in memory care and, and Parkinson's support groups. And so I love to draw from uh, not only the, the, the music that I use with them and the work that I have planned to work with them, but what they give me back, which is oftentimes so much more than I, I feel like I'm giving them. And something really cool happened today. So I was talking about this idea of gratitude as we're in the, the month of November. And, um, you know, I said, well, it's also Veterans Day is observed on Friday. Actual Veterans Day is Saturday, but being observed on Friday. So maybe let's take this time to express gratitude for our veterans. Uh, and I asked who was a veteran in the room and, and who was, you know, was personally touched by a veteran, whether it was a, a spouse, a family member, a friend, things like that. And um, and then I asked for branches of service. I One gentleman in my in my morning group was who was increasingly I've seen more withdrawn, more isolated, um, you know, lower energy, probably as a result of their, you know, disease process. And so at the end, I, I checked in with them and I said, you mentioned Air Force, right? And I said, what is that Air Force song? And I think I know the melody of it, but I'm not sure if I know the words. If I come up with the melody, could you help me with that? And, you know, okay, maybe a little bit of a nod. So I started to hum, you know, um, is that right? Is that the Air Force song? And the look on his face. And I've been doing this for 10 years. I should I should not be so surprised by this <laughs> at this point in my career, how music can reach people um, when they just seem to be in a state that is unreachable. And I, I don't know if I'll ever forget the look on his face today and how he just lit up everything changed and I thought okay I need to take the time to dig more into this and we we're at the end of the session and um, I said okay let pulled out my phone I said pardon me while I look on my phone you know I know technology is again it's that big generation gap so I don't want to look like I'm coming out of the moment I want to say hey I'm using my phone to to find this song so hold on one moment while I look for this and we know 
God bless the internet, was able to pull up the lyrics, um, you know, know enough about the song that was able to kind of figure out the chords in the moment. And there was a couple other group members who knew this song too, the, the Wild Blue Yonder, and pulled up a couple, uh, you know, verses of it and, and just kept repeating the first couple verses with the chorus. And this gentleman just shoulders back, was conducting with both arms, was singing, was a little tearful. Um, after the session, I went over and I just said, hey, I could see that that song had a lot of meaning for you. Would you mind sharing with me a little bit about your time in the service? And he shared his role, what his job was. Uh, couldn't quite remember where he was stationed, but, um, you know, was able to share enough with me, you know, that, that it felt like I could tell he felt heard and listened to. And I could tell um, that it, he had a situation with his time in the service where he wanted to remember and he wanted to share, and it meant a lot to him to have that opportunity. And um, music made that happen. I did not make that happen. You know, music made that happen. I'm, I'm fully aware of that, and I feel so uh, thankful that I could be in that moment at that time with him. So I encourage you this week, uh, if you do have any veterans in your life and it is appropriate and it is something that would be a comfort to them, you know uh, the people in your life the, you know better than I do, obviously, um, to, to use some of these songs, whether it's a branch-specific song or patriotic music in general, um, again, if it's appropriate and it's a positive association, uh, to use it to, to honor them, to thank them, to see them, to hear them this week. So my sing-along before we close uh, this first segment today is going to be just another suggestion. One of my favorite patriotic songs, America the Beautiful. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of gray, for purple mountains' majesty. Above the fruited plain, America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. So glad you're joining us tonight. We have a great program. I can't wait to introduce you to my guest from the Ann Stork Center. Jason Babel is here. We'll meet him right after this quick word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Are you a music therapist or part of the music therapy community? If so, we're excited to announce Aria. Aria is a mobile app that provides tools, resources, and community for today's modern music therapist. You can plan, implement, and share music therapy interventions with the community Keep track of your schedule and contacts and learn from other members in our community section. Best of all, ARIA is free. Visit arianow.com to get started today. The Palm Beach Music Therapy Institute is a professional music therapy practice serving medical, community, and educational settings throughout Southeast Florida. With our experienced team of 11 board-certified music therapists, we use music and research-based therapeutic interventions to help individuals of all ages and abilities reach their goals and increase their quality of life. For more information on our services and programs, please visit our website at pbmti.com, engage with us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or call us at 561-747-9944. You are listening to Palm Beach Music Therapy Connections. If you'd like to join the conversation, the toll-free number is 888-565-1470. Now back to the show. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. You are listening to and watching Connections. I'm your host, Bree Gordon, and I have an awesome guest here today. I'm so excited to introduce you to Jason Babel. Am I saying that right? Babel. Oh, that was very so close. close. Jason yeah, Babel, thank you so much for being here tonight. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Um, I got the chance to hear you speak at Partnership for Aging a few weeks back, uh, which is a networking group that features people from all over the different um, kind of areas of, of senior. Um, you know, advocacy and kind of empowerment and, and just trying to help people live really independently as long as possible, if mm -hmm. that's possible, which your topic fit 
perfectly into um, and seemed to also be something that really nobody was kind of aware was going on. Yes. Which is kind of cool when you get in a room of, um, you know, there's, you know, sometimes 70, 80 people there working in this arena and Mm -hmm. we find something that can help our clients that is like on the verge, you know, on the cutting edge, which is so, so cool. So I'm really glad, you know, you got connected with them and and are getting chances to share um, what you guys are up to at the Ann Stork Center. But I love even beyond that, that you, uh, I'm, I'm thinking now. I'm presuming, like me, of the millennial, yes, generation, yes. right? Yeah. And which is is cool because a lot of times I go to these networking things, mm-hmm. and um, I, I sometimes tend to be the youngest person by a few <laughs> decades in them. It's been my experience, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm sure it has yeah. been. Um, and I think I got a chance to share with you briefly. I was just about to speak at the Creative Mornings mm-hmm. um, where I got a chance to speak in front of a room of millennials and then convince them to just love on seniors and volunteer their time. And I thought, how the heck is this going to go over? Mm-hmm. I have no idea. And as I've shared on the show in the past, I was amazed at how many people um, reached out to me afterwards and were looking for opportunities. So fantastic. It is, you know, and it's one of those things that I thought, I don't know who's going to want to listen to this. I don't know how many people our age are are you know looking for opportunities to to connect intergenerationally mm-hmm. and it turns out a lot are absolutely and this is something that um really affects almost everyone you know mm-hmm. who doesn't have whether it's a family member or a community member um throughout the generation someone that we can benefit from a relationship with but it usually starts with a personal relationship um mm-hmm. is what usually gets folks our age interested in helping the seniors. So I wonder if you have a personal connection of what kind of led you to this work or maybe just a professional drive. Um, so professionally, when I'm speaking about Anstork Center, we serve um, individuals who have developmental disabilities. Mm-hmm. Those oftentimes include seniors. Mm-hmm. Because of the medical advances that we have presently, people with disabilities are living longer and longer. Mm-hmm. So we have to find new ways to care for this um, vulnerable population and attend to their needs as they age. My personal story, getting involved with the Anstork Center, um, I kind of fell into it. Mm-hmm. You know, my background and my education had to do with environmental security. Oh. And yeah, so it was, <laughs> All right. it's, it was quite uh, diverse or, or, mm-hmm. or different from how I ended up here. Mm-hmm. Um, but I found Anstork Center just kind of by luck. And when I went there, I fell in love with its mission and its individuals. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have a place in my heart for seniors because of my relationship with my grandma, okay. who's no longer with us, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. We used to call her Jean the Machine um, because <laughs> um, Grandma Jean had dentures, a pacemaker. She had a fake shoulder. She had a fake um, uh, hip. She had all these different tools that were keeping her, you know, functioning. She's go-go gra- gadget grandma. Go-go gadget grandma, yeah, Jean the Machine. But, you know, her spirit was always intact, mm-hmm. and she always had so much love to give and advice to impart. And, you know, we just had a great relationship. So mm-hmm. when I have this opportunity to couple my professional work at Ann Stork Center, helping people with the development of disabilities and reaching out to additional seniors in the community. I mean, it's just something that, I mean, it means it means a lot to me. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Um, I had a feeling, I mean, I feel like it's, a lot of this tends to come from our relationship with our grandparents sometimes, you know, yeah. and that's what I really was trying to highlight when, when I went, to, had the opportunity to speak at Creative Mornings and mm-hmm. I had like pictures of my grams, 95, still works every day, wow. like, with her, and I got I, I always feel bad when I say this stuff on the air, but like legit with her one eye, like just like mm-hmm. rocking it, like just this, there's no slowing down this woman. That's amazing. She's just incredible. And yeah. I, you know, I wanted to tell a story. I'm like, I'm sure your grandmas are awesome. Mm-hmm. Everybody out there, you know, I'm sure they've got cool mints and tissues and stuff Absolutely. in their pockets. Like my grandma's got like, you know, five-year-old breeze like hey can i you know have a candy no but i've got a wrench and i've got some stock <laughs> tips and i'll let you know how to sell that wash and dryer over there if you'd be interested that's my gram okay yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> so i'm like i when people say you know oh running a business did, did you go to business school i'm like no i uh you know just mm-hmm. gram call her hey yeah. what should i do you know and uh, these relationships they shape us going forward and I, I feel like we're very fortunate mm-hmm. to have had that um, and it does it does leave a, a long lasting impact. It really becomes their legacy, you know, Absolutely. the effect that that they have on us. So I just like hearing that, you know, personal connection, um, because I, I think that it just adds authenticity to the work that we do. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I had an opportunity to meet Brianne Weaver from Ann Stork Center and 
her intern Ashley, I believe, was on. I, believe. I think that's her name. I oh. uh, they were both awesome. Came on and spoke a little bit about the center, specific to the work that they do okay. um, as music therapists. I've recently hired two of your former interns. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, who are just uh, Abby came on in the past year, and um, Angie Davis just started with us, and they are just killing it. They're amazing. Fantastic. So I have all of the praise for <laughs> Ann Stork Center, um, and in just loving hearing more and more about mm -hmm. this gem that's kind of down there in Fort Lauderdale, but extending far beyond that region. I mean, you're up in Palm Beach talking about programs that you guys are uh, definitely working on initiatives for. So if you want to just give a broad description of what this mobility program is that you, you all are working on and the grant that's that's uh, funding it right now. Certainly. So you're familiar with our mission. We serve individuals with developmental disabilities. I think one of the um, focuses for our leadership was to see how many individuals we could impact. Mm -hmm. So when the Florida Department of Transportation came up with um, a grant pilot project that had to do with enhancing mobility for individuals with disabilities and seniors, we thought this was a good mission match for us. Mm -hmm. So we applied for it, you know, we defended our position, we had to really look at, you know, how far the scope of the project is and what we were able to do, and we thought this would be wonderful. We're in charge of a region that includes Broward and Palm Beach County, and the mission for the it's project- It's not small. <laughs> no, it's not small. <laughs> <laughs> That's no small task. Yeah, and the mission for the project is to enhance coordinated systems mm -hmm. um, for individuals who are transportation disadvantaged. Okay. So that includes vulnerable groups like seniors, individuals with disabilities, mm -hmm. those who have mental health issues, low income. Yep. Um, there's many different verticals that we're trying to uh, address, mm -hmm. and we're looking at their transportation needs and systems to identify the gaps. You know, yeah. we know that our partners in, in the transit world do an excellent job right now, but there's always opportunities for increased efficiency, and that's what we're here for. We want to bring all the key players together, start thinking about how we can work as a, as a network, mm -hmm. and figure out what are the, um, the opportunities that exist. You know, and I'm sure we're going to focus more on this later as we go through the program, but one of the things that was a big takeaway for me from listening to you speak, and um, I kind of have been aware of it and noticing in, in even these, these shows week to week, is that everybody who has an idea, whether mm -hmm. it's something that's, you know, an, an organization partnering with the Department of Transportation, which is, you know, a large scale thing, or just one person who has a, a great idea, yep. it takes... You know, it's cliche, but it does take the village to make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, like my guest last week, I was talking about the gentleman in Knoxville, Tennessee, makes the the um, Halloween costumes for kiddos in in wheelchairs. He's like, I'm like, well, how does you know how does a family fund this? And well, they don't. You know, I call my buddy here who works with wood, and I call my buddy over here who has fabric, and we come together, and we make it happen. Like that is a small example of how some really incredible major programs come together. It's a really great idea. It is awesome. You have to check out his website. Definitely will. He is so, so cool. I mean, mm -hmm. he is awesome. The last week's show, go check it out because he has some amazing ideas. Physical therapist okay. uh, who just worked with kids and worked with wheelchairs for years was like, I'm going to make this happen. So anyways, but again, can't do it on your own. Absolutely. Right. Yep. Um, just as as you guys having this great idea, it really takes those community partnerships, which mm -hmm. is why you reached out, I'm guessing, to Absolutely. Partnership for Aging. And so talk a little bit about that and that those community partnerships and, and what you're kind of looking for for that. So when we talk about enhancing mobility for this community, as you said, it's going to take all of the key players and mm -hmm. stakeholders that are involved. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we're trying to do at present is really just get an idea, a snapshot of what the existing services and capacities are. So when we're looking at individuals who are transportation disadvantaged, we thought the really good place to start would be looking at the human services agencies that serve this vulnerable population. So you saw me doing a presentation. We're reaching out to the community to educate them on the project. Sure. And then we just want them to get involved and come into the fold and tell us what they're doing uh, in terms of transportation. Yeah. So at present, we've identified over 2,000 human services agencies within the counties that we're trying to get information from so that they can help us wow. better serve their people. So, you know, what we want them to do is just help us fill out a questionnaire mm -hmm. and talk about, you know, if they do have a transportation program, what services they provide, when they provide them, how they provide them. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that eventually, you know, if you're providing service A and I'm providing service B, there might be some overlap there where we could help each other and work as a community, this community that we've discussed, to to better serve these populations. How is that 
collected and kind of reviewed? Because that's a lot of data coming in. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that's not a short questionnaire. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we made it robust because we we have identified a lot of different issues sure. that will. You have to be specific. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That will you know detail the capacity of the different agencies. Right. We've tried to make it as digestible as possible the mm -hmm. questionnaire uh, because we do realize it's a robust document. So we put it into a Google form. You, know, you can find it on our website at anstorkcenter.org. It's a few questions, I mm -hmm. like to think, that will help, you know, serve your population better. Yeah. Because oftentimes, you know, the people who are running these agencies end up being the advocates or the voice for the individuals they serve. Yeah. So we're hoping that they'll take 10 minutes to go onto our website and, and fill it out that way. We can aggregate the data and then start putting it into verticals. So let's imagine you are someone who has a group home. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to look at the issues that are affecting those human services agencies that have that specific business model. We also want to look at different agencies that have a different business model or perhaps um, work with a subgroup within the transportation disadvantage. So it's a lot of data, mm -hmm. but we're hoping to share it with everyone who participated afterwards because, you know, it's this type of data or this amount of data that helps drive outcomes in the future. What I like, too, about what you were sharing is, and kind of what I was mentioning in, in my opening today about just appreciating when people are out there in the community, and, and you're not necessarily, first of all, it's not about competition. Mm -hmm. I mean, where you're talking about, you're talking about, talking about human health services. Yes. This is not competition. This is, we get into these jobs because we have the heart for these jobs. And, um, you know, even as a business owner, I appreciate other music therapists in our community just helping each other out, helping fill the needs. That is the vibe I got from you, um, mm -hmm. and and even being careful not to duplicate services. I mean, you were even talking about things that were pre-existing. You mentioned an app that was cool that I can't remember. Uh, go go something. That is a concierge service, <coughs> actually. Okay. Yes. So different um, things that are kind of coexisting that are mm -hmm. doing similar things, but but not looking to replace or duplicate, but really just to connect. Yes. All of that in one place. Absolutely. Which I thought was awesome. Um, this is not a, a process that's just going to be done like at the end of the month and then it's going to be a, a clean. Mm -hmm. Right, because there's so many things. You're talking about 2,000 different organizations that you're partnering, getting information from. So what is the you know trajectory, the timeline look like for for this this grant and for this program? Yeah, okay. So as you said, we're not trying to recreate the wheel. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're, we're acting as an uh, auxiliary organization to the existing transportation companies and services that are here in Broward and Palm Beach County. Um, we're using the mobility management circle. So this circle looks like any other, um, I guess, project that you might be putting together that involves engaging the community. So first thing that you have to do is figure out who the key stakeholders are, look at what the key issues are, and then you start engaging them to see how you might be able to assist them. Um, one of the steps afterwards will be we'll start, you know, looking for sustainable viable, viable solutions based on the most pressing concerns from the community. Mm -hmm. We can't solve all the problems. Right. You know what I mean? But at the same time, if, you know, let's say a thousand of those agencies said that their number one issue was a volunteer driver program. Well, that sounds like there's a really big need yeah. and we should be focusing on that. Yeah. I will tell you that, you know, it's a multi-year project mm -hmm. and it's a pilot project. You know, this is, uh, this is funded through the Florida Department of Transportation and their Section 5310 grant, mm -hmm. which is actually federal dollars. Um, and it's an untraditional one that, uh, that we're working with now. So we're looking at a timeline that will take us until about 2020, okay. um, where we think at that point we will have had the opportunity to beta test some of the solutions that address the community's problems and then, and then we'll be looking for either policy changes or additional funding in order to full-scale launch. That's awesome. And here's why that's exciting. Because mm -hmm. I can hear some people, I mean, especially, and we'll go back to our little, you know, millennials here. Yeah. <laughs> we like things done yesterday. Of course. That's just how Everybody we are. That. That's, you know, and, and there's, there's good and there's bad in that. I mm -hmm. appreciate the drive in that. But, you know, I think there's also a lot we can learn, you know, about yep. putting the time in and patience. Um so here's how I would reframe that for anyone listening and saying, oh, my gosh, this is something we'll see in years down the road. This is a chance for a village of people, a community of people to be involved in something great, you know, to be involved from the ground level of creating something. I mean, that's truly what it looks like you're looking for at this stage with these surveys mm -hmm. is this input that will lay the foundation for the next step. Absolutely. I mean, this this baseline information is what we can take to the higher powers, those who make the policies 
those in the community have the opportunities to make changes and say, look, the community has spoken. Mm -hmm. This is one voice from 2,000 different agencies who have identified a series of issues that would allow us to better serve their population. And yeah. it will take some effort. And that's why we were hired to come in and help mm -hmm. aggregate all this effort. Um, but it, as you said, it, it is an opportunity for us to make some serious impacts yeah. on how this population are able to access all of life services. Yeah. And I mean, you know, we have a project that we're working on right now, which is called the A Ride Away Project. And we use that name because everything in life is only a ride away. Mm, I like so, that. Yeah. So we really need to make sure that we get a, a serious and concrete baseline mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, data set so that as we're moving forward, we can say to everyone, look, the, I mean, the proof is in the pudding, so to speak. Right, right. right. So we've been talking kind of the, the big scale picture yes. and kind of the background information of it. Um, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We come back and we'll talk really specific about what the benefits you all expect okay. to see from this and some, you know, real life situations. I'm sure you've seen them. I know I've seen them of what a limitation to, you know, access to some of these services looks like. And mm -hmm. again, what it looks like when someone does have this program connecting them to the medical services they need, the education they need, whatever it may be. We'll be right back. The Palm Beach Music Therapy Institute is a professional music therapy practice serving medical, community, and educational settings throughout Southeast Florida. With our experienced team of 11 board-certified music therapists, we use music and research-based therapeutic interventions to help individuals of all ages and abilities reach their goals and increase their quality of life. For more information on our services and programs, please visit our website at pbmti.com Engage with us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or call us at 561-747-9944. Are you a music therapist or part of the music therapy community? If so, we're excited to announce ARIA. ARIA is a mobile app that provides tools, resources, and community for today's modern music therapist. You can plan, implement, and share music therapy interventions with the community, Keep track of your schedule and contacts and learn from other members in our community section. Best of all, ARIA is free. Visit arianow.com to get started today. You are listening to Palm Beach Music Therapy Connections. If you'd like to join the conversation, the toll-free number is 888-565-1470. Now back to the show. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us tonight. You are listening to and watching Connections. I'm your host, Bree Gordon, here with Jason from the Ann Stork Center, and we're talking about a, a brand new, right? Yes, pilot project. Pilot project, brand new, Mobility Management Facilitation Program. You guys need a little bit of a sexier name, I feel like. You know, we did we did try and work with that because that was the <laughs> feedback we were getting. So we rebranded it as Community Transportation Connections, Enhancing ah. Mobility for Every Ability. Oh. Oh, so much better. Isn't it? Yeah. Yes. That's wonderful. We felt like that name is kind of, it really spoke about what we were trying to do. It's yeah. a community with transportation connections. It's a network of different organizations and agencies that are going to enhance the whole system yep. to better serve our I individuals. love that because, you know, we're talking about the benefits of, of empowering people with mm -hmm. their, their independence and mobility and all this. Words like management, you yes. know, can make you feel I'm being great, I'm being managed again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's of just course. one of those words. So we talk about connections to accessibility and, and again, it's just all those empowering words. So beautiful. I mean, didn't even know that. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's really cool. So this is what I want to kind of to hone in on is the specific benefits that, mm -hmm. you know, you all expect to see that perhaps in, in you know, another situation you've already seen um, in your work at Ann Stork Center when you're working with individuals um, and older adults with uh, developmental disabilities, with some of these challenges that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, what what are the outcomes, the, the spiritual, emotional, physical outcomes of someone having this accessibility? Well, transportation is that mode that connects you to everything that you need in life. Mm -hmm. You know, we call them life-sustaining activities. Mm -hmm. And when someone eliminates the transportation barrier, there are limitless possibilities to what they can accomplish. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of individuals that we serve on a daily basis that have, you know, education plans that involve not only going to school or to an adult day training center, but they also have activities in the community. And we were fortunate enough to work with you know, the Department of Transportation, as well as, you know, Broward County to get vehicles so that our individuals could participate in those different activities. Mm -hmm. 
the motivation that they experience when working on an education plan in you know a park can be very different than a tabletop activity um, in a classroom setting. Sure. I'm sure you've you're very familiar with this as a music therapist mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. the different types of motivations that these individuals um, can have. So when we're looking at the human services agencies and asking them to come into our realm and participate, we understand that they're experts in you know their fields. Mm-hmm. And what we want to communicate to them is that transportation shouldn't be a barrier to you providing the type of programming that your organization's mission is is set to do. Yeah. You know, it, it shouldn't be that a child can't get to an after-school program that's off-site from school because there's a disconnect between the transportation or amongst the transportation systems. So we want to fill those gaps, and those are some of the immediate um, benefits that we're hoping these agencies will see. Everyone, you know, they usually want to know the what's in it for me immediately. Sure. And, of course, that makes sense. You know, this being a pilot project that will take several years to right. see, you know, sustainable concrete outcomes, outcomes from, you know, we want to offer immediate benefits right now to these agencies. Um, one of those that I can speak about is a travel training program that okay. we're working on presently. We have a young lady named Danielle McGill, a wonderful young lady who's come to work at Ann Stork Center uh, via State Senator Renee Garcia's office. Okay. There she was an architect uh, on one of the State Senate bills that had to deal with inter-county transportation issues. Mm-hmm. It can be challenging for individuals who work in Miami or in Fort Lauderdale and live in one of the other vice versa of the Mm -hmm. counties to transfer across those lines. Mm -hmm. Now everyone's doing the best that they can, but it can be a challenge um, for individuals with disabilities to have to go to transfer points. Now unfortunately, the bill that they were working on was unsuccessful, but it did um, promote her career path to start working on these transportation issues. So Danielle's now with us and she's our policy leadership fellow. Um, She's working with the individuals themselves that would have to take transportation, um, public transportation systems. So we're using her as an immediate benefit to the agencies that come in, complete our questionnaire, say that they want to be a part of the network so that their individuals can start to learn, you know, how to use a transportation network company, how to use Broward County um, public transportation systems. Now, while there are um, travel trainers within the community that you can use, we haven't been able to identify one that uses all of the different services. And so we're hoping that's where Danielle's specialty will come in. She'll teach you how to get onto an Uber, let's say, mm-hmm. and then transfer to Tri-Rail and then go back and use, you know, Palm Trans uh, fixed route service. Okay. So we're hoping that it'll be a really exciting benefit for the agencies immediately. I love how, you, you know, you're, the focus is, too, on the individuals actually using the program. Of course, you know, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, it's important. We talked a lot about the community partnerships of people, mm-hmm. you know, and, and who are providing the services and how they perceive the situation, right? Yep. I can tell you how I perceive the challenges of my clients. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not that individual looking for that transportation. So that's key. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm really glad you brought that up. Something that I thought was really cool, and and maybe I misunderstood it, so I wanted to ask you about it here, was a a volunteer training on, like, an individual car that would be part of this transportation that would help kind of partner with people. Maybe I misunderstood this. A volunteer training car that would be a part of it. I'm not sure. No? No, maybe I just made up this wonderful idea in my head. (laughs) Sounds like a good idea. (laughs) Uh, training individuals who, I just had this awesome, like, driving Miss Daisy fantasy, I think, apparently, that I just inserted into your business plan. It's fine. I promise I was paying attention. Um, okay, maybe not. No, that were volunteers, what are opportunities for volunteers in the program? We'll start there. So, as it stands right now, the volunteers that want to be a part of the program, we're aggregating their data, but we don't have specific, um, programs that they can participate in right now. Okay. One of the reasons being is that we have done a lot of research and identified other mobility management programs Mm -hmm. that maybe didn't wait for the community to voice their needs enough, which is why we're really focusing on getting this baseline information. Yeah. It can't be a solution that, you know, I've seen work in Wichita or a solution that has been proposed in New York City. Mm -hmm. We have to be addressing the problems that come directly from not only the human services agencies and their leadership, but from the individuals as well. We want to look at the cross-section between, you know, that after-school program nonprofit and the individual who needs those services and say, where, what is something that we can really make an impact on in terms of transportation? Yeah. So 
we'd love to have volunteers come out. Of course, you're always welcome to come to Anstork Center itself and volunteer sure, sure. Um, for different, uh, different programs there. Maybe this there. program I made up in my head, there'll be an opportunity for that someday. <laughs> I don't know. Lots, like plenty of opportunities. <laughs> um, yeah, that's awesome. I, um, you bring up a really good point of, you know, it's great to model after and see successful programs, but mm-hmm. we have so many unique um, cultural considerations here in South Florida that it's not going to look like Wichita and it's not, Absolutely. I mean, it'll look closer to New York City than it would to Wichita, but mm-hmm. um, so many different, uh, you know, languages and cultures to consider. And uh, I mean, l- just the language barrier in general, I imagine, presents a challenge, you know, for transportation when you're disseminating this information. And um, I'm sure there are you know, multiple different languages involved in it, but just also reaching people Mm -hmm. and also reaching people, you know, different cultures that, um, you know, don't want to maybe accept help or um, it's perceived as a pride thing. I mean, Mm -hmm. how do you overcome some of these cultural uh, boundaries? So we're relying heavily on some of the partners in the community who already have existing relationships with these populations. Mm -hmm. So one of our major partners, Children's Services Council, Mm -hmm. you know, they're a funder of the different human services organizations. They understand what it's like to work with those specific populations and they have a specialty Mm -hmm. uh, on dealing with them and relationships that we haven't created yet. So what we're really trying to do is pull in agencies that have that influential uh, position within the community and have them endorse the project Mm -hmm. and say, you know, transportation is very important. Yeah. And we want you to understand that, you know, there's no one's taking score or Mm -hmm. no one's going to dock your funding or anything along those lines. If you answer this honestly and say, yes, transportation is impacting our ability to serve. Mm-hmm. So those relationships are going to be crucial. As you said, it takes a community. Right. Um, we have taken all of our information and translated it into Spanish, Creole, and Portuguese. Wonderful. We wanted to make sure that um, these populations have access to the material, um, that they're being represented well. Mm-hmm. Um, and we continue to look for new partners. So we're yeah. always on the lookout for someone in the community if they say, you know, this group is underrepresented. You know, we definitely don't want that to be the case with ours. Yeah. So we would love for them to, you know, reach out to us. They can come to the center. They can find us online, and, and we'll uh, we'll make sure that their voice is heard as well. That's awesome. Yeah. Who are some examples of people you're already partnered with and in examples of people you might be looking for? Um, so one of our major partners right now is is 211. I mean, okay. they are the gateway sure. in the community. Yeah. You call 211, and they, they'll provide you information on most of the services that are out there, if not all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, we're also partnering with, as I mentioned, the Children's Services Council. Um, we actually are forging a partnership with United Way through their awesome. Mission United program um, to make sure that the veterans are getting the service that they need as well. Cool. Um, some of the, the other partners that we're looking at and we would like to spend time with um, are other agencies up in, in Palm Beach, just mm-hmm. because Anstork Center has been in, in Broward and mm-hmm. we're new to the community up there. Um, we're trying to forge some some new relationships up there, but I have to be honest with you. Everyone has been has been pretty welcoming, and I yeah, can't good. say that there is a group or an influential uh, coalition or committee that we've approached. That we need to call out right yeah, now. Yeah, that, on the- that has said you know transportation is not an issue. It yeah. could be anything from Comto to the Partnership for Aging. Everyone yeah. has has understood the need for you know this assessment and then a community solution to transportation issues within uh, within the region. Well, I know that I'm personally going to be working on uh, forming a partnership or, or at least communication with the Area and Sand Aging for Palm Beach and Treasure Coast. That is awesome. a partnership you have for with Broward County, correct? Yes. Okay, yep. very cool. We definitely do. Um, because when we were speaking about that, um, you know, speaking with the, the agency up in Palm Beach, this is, this is so crucial, mm-hmm. you know? It really is, and we're talking about our focus is – not only on keeping people safe in in their homes and independent as long as possible, but another big focus of ours is caregivers. Okay. And I, I would imagine that a program like this, it just is going to enhance, uh, you know, complement, supplement, enhance this caregiver support mm-hmm. initiative. Um, because oftentimes caregivers, and, and I mean, how how does that fit into your your model? In fact, have you talked about that at all? What the impact it has on someone who might be caring for multiple individuals, and and how this you know, this pilot program is going to enhance, you know, caregiver health as well. Um, well, we're looking at, at caregivers mm-hmm. as um, a gateway into the needs of some of the individuals. I can't yeah. say that we've specifically targeted caregivers in a I'm sense on so much more work. This their mobility. So not issues. nice of me. I'm sorry. <laughs> but we're, I mean, as it's a pilot project, we're learning as we go. Yeah. So when we yeah. speak to people like yourself from the community, 
and you say, you know, maybe you should address this. Uh -huh. um, maybe you should address that. We, we want this information and we want that kind of feedback and input yeah. um, so that we can start looking at it from a different perspective. But I can't say yet that we've looked at caregivers, caregivers but now... But First, now it's on the list. Now it's out there. <laughs> yeah. Now you're accountable for it. Thank well, you, Brie. you know, <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. I'm sure you really mean that. Um, you know, I'm just thinking of you know that sandwich generation and mm -hmm. those you know those individuals who are you know bringing their kids everywhere and also responsible for their parents to get to their doctor's appointments. Yep. Um, or or even seniors themselves who are caring for their adult children mm -hmm. with disabilities. I mean, there's so much double dipping into between the aging and and children you know and adults with disabilities and even just children like even just being a parent in general um there's you know our caregivers are oh, they're the hardest working people we got absolutely you know and so any any support they can get um not that you need to you know totally add this whole new thing into your multitude of you're doing but but something to consider right because yeah. um that is definitely one of our initiatives this year, and I know it's a big initiative for ARP as well, mm -hmm. um, because I think people are realizing how much we rely on caregivers for, um, you know, for this unpaid labor, mm -hmm. you know, that they do every day. Um, we're going to take another quick break. We come back. I want to talk specifically, since we are in the week of Veterans Day, uh, okay. you mentioned quickly one of the support programs you're partnering on for veterans, but just how you see this impacting uh, their lives specifically. We'll be right back. Are you a music therapist or part of the music therapy community? If so, we're excited to announce ARIA. ARIA is a mobile app that provides tools, resources, and community for today's modern music therapist. You can plan, implement, and share music therapy interventions with the community, keep track of your schedule and contacts, and learn from other members in our community section. Best of all, ARIA is free. Visit arianow.com to get started today. The Palm Beach Music Therapy Institute is a professional music therapy practice serving medical, community, and educational settings throughout Southeast Florida. With our experienced team of 11 board-certified music therapists, we use music and research-based therapeutic interventions to help individuals of all ages and abilities reach their goals and increase their quality of life. For more information on our services and programs, please visit our website at pbmti.com Engage with us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or call us at 561-747-9944. You are listening to Palm Beach Music Therapy Connections. If you'd like to join the conversation, the toll-free number is 888-565-1470. Now back to the show. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us tonight. You are listening to and watching Connections. I'm your host, Bree Gordon, here with Jason. I'm not even saying his last name anymore because I'm pretty sure I'm going to mess it up again. From the Ann Stork Center <laughs> with the... Community Transportation Connections, Enhancing Mobility for Every Ability. Oh, it's so much better than Mobility Management Facilitation Program. I'm yes. sorry. If you came up with that, the original one, and I'm dissing you right now... No, not at all. You know, I it, apologize. It was a grant. So when they mm, when they it put had to out be formal, they yeah. make it very formal. Yeah, but this yes. new one is like flashy and mm -hmm. but in the right way. Well, thank you. Catchy, I like. Yeah, it. Thank you. Yeah, it's very good. Um, I like how you shared with me during the commercial break that we actually were coming up with good ideas here, and I'm not just piling on you because no. I would feel bad <laughs> for I stressed out my guests tonight. No, that's good. So, <laughs> but you know what? It is one of those things that. Um, I, I do feel like, you know, caregivers, um, they become, they, they do get overlooked, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because they are the last people that are going to say, hey, I need help. Yes. They really are. Um, you know, I work very closely with the Alzheimer's Association, obviously the volunteer work we do with the Aryan and Aging. Uh, we see this time and time again. In fact, some of the stats with Alzheimer's Association, it's like 60% of caregivers actually pass away before you know, their spouse that they're mm -hmm. caring for, or their loved one that they're caring for does from this diagnosis because they are just depleted. Mm -hmm. You Absolutely. know, they're emotionally, physically, psychologically, they become depleted. They put all that they can into their care. And in its spouses, it's adult children. It's adult children leaving their jobs, mm -hmm. you know, um, to support. So, again, the, any support programs, um, and I'm sure you'll find that as you're reaching out to all these different organizations of the, the 2,000 so far that you've reached out to, which um, sounds like a lot, but it makes sense. I mean, if you think about our area, 
Um, and we are a specialty area for treating unique needs. Um, mm -hmm. Think about how many people move to this area specifically for that, whether exactly. it's natural aging as retirement and it's a, a destination to be or you know for a lot of individuals that maybe have joint pain or or breathing issues that can't be in the cold i mean we are you know the place to be so it makes sense that you'd have so many opportunities mm -hmm. um you know to partner with and and to to meet these exceptional needs and you know we want to be a resource in the community we have a yeah. a, a toll-free number that okay. caregivers can call if they're looking for transportation solutions for those Wonderful. that they're serving um I'll give you the number at the end of the show, or I can say it now. Yeah, please do. Yeah. So it's 888-825-TRIP. Okay. The TRIP, T-R-I-P, 8747. You can call that anytime, and my colleague or uh, myself will answer. And we'll give you the best travel advice that we can based on your specific need. That's great. And, you know, this, this whole idea of caregivers and, you know, the challenges that they face, mm -hmm. we completely understand at Anstork Center because oftentimes when people come to our center, it's because a caregiver can no longer handle the responsibility sure. of caring for that individual as well as someone uh, else in their family or the job responsibilities that just daily life activities. Mm -hmm. One of our um, our ex-employees, Ginger Jones, always had a wonderful saying. That's a fabulous name, by the way. Ginger Jones. Yeah, yes. that's great. <laughs> she was with the Historic Center for about, I'm going to say, 30 years. Wow. And, you know, she would always say to the parents or the caregiver, you know, it only took 80 of us to replace you. Hmm. Yeah. You know, you can't be too hard on yourself. Yeah. We have a team of, of, of staff, you know, one to three ratios. So, you know, at the end of the day, we're hoping that this mobility management facilitation program, community <laughs> transportation connections, <laughs> will, uh, will really help everyone in the community, whether it's caregivers, human services agencies, or those individuals who now have the ability and the empowerment to, to travel on their own to access life's I really like Joyce. that saying. I think I'm going to steal Ginger Jones' saying. Yeah. You, if you could pass that on to her. Because um, I think it's oftentimes perceived as, well, I, I definitely think it's oftentimes perceived as like a weakness. Mm -hmm. You know? Giving up. Yeah. yeah and it's a strength yeah. to recognize in yourself, you know, that you could benefit from a little support, which is only just going to become... Uh, a greater team around mm -hmm. the person that you love. Absolutely. You know, and not that it's the same situation, but on a similar scale, I mean, I, my background was working seven years in hospice care, and this was really hard for caregivers to, to pull in people to come into their home yep. for hospice care, and it would be looked at as almost like a failure mm -hmm. of giving up. And, you know, you are even, you, you are still in charge of this care. You're just managing this team of yeah. just people, angels, to just come in and love on your family member, uh, whoever that is, your spouse, your parent, whoever it is, um, that much more. So Absolutely. what a great way, you know, to empower that person and to give that give that power back to them and say, hey, you made the right choice. Here's the benefits of it. And um, also you're going to be healthier because of it. Of course. You know, yeah. um, I want to get take a chance. We've got just a couple minutes left okay. to just briefly mention since we are talking about Veterans Day and and just empowering our veterans and enhancing their independence um, is huge. Absolutely. You know, for all the the freedoms they have allowed us, mm -hmm. um, it just makes sense that we should be working our tails off, you know, to, to get out there and, and give that same support back to them. So really quickly, if you just want to mention some of the programs you all are working on. Yeah, so we feel the exact same way that you do mm -hmm. um, and about serving the veterans who have served us. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've tried to identify some of the major players in the community that we thought had those um, relationships and influence mm -hmm. so that we could reach the, the veterans that, that need our assistance. So we started partnering with uh, Mission United over at the United Way. We're working with a gentleman, Ken Jude, who's been fantastic thus far. You know, he recognized that transportation can be a barrier to some of these veterans receiving the services that they need. While there are certain transportation programs in place, mm -hmm. um, he did identify some gaps in service. So what we've committed to doing right now as a, as a team is he's going to, uh, to help us get our preliminary questionnaire out to the agencies that serve veterans. That's awesome. We can identify what their needs are. I may cross-reference that with the veterans who are either looking for employment or any other type of service that they may need uh, and are relying on public sector services for and then, and then just work with them to figure out how we can come up with some viable, sustainable solutions. That's what it's about. Yep. You know? For sure. Absolutely. That's awesome. Um, really quickly, if anyone's listening or watching tonight um, and they either feel like they could 
offer input f- as someone who's using current systems mm-hmm. or as a caretaker or as a professional, or maybe they're an organization that wants to fill out that survey, get involved. How can people get in touch with you? Okay, so there's several different ways that people can reach us. Fabulous. Um, I'd love it if people headed over to our website at anstorkcenter.org. Um, our page. S T O R C K. Yes. Correct? Okay. Yes. S T O R C K. Not like the bird. <laughs> exactly. Um, and our page is the mobi- mobility management page. Okay. Um, on there, you can find information about our program, our scope, some of the questionnaires, including those that individuals can take. Okay. So we can identify some of those issues. Um, they can email us at uh, mobility at anstorkcenter.org. As well, um, they can follow us on social media. We've got some really cool things going on with Danielle McGill. And that's ASC Rider Insider. That is the Facebook page? Yeah, well, so we wanted to her. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, what can yeah. I see on Rider Insider? That's So Danielle's cool. got a blog there where she's using like peer-to-peer resources mm-hmm. to try and travel train these individuals and give them tips on how to navigate different transportation systems. Mm-hmm. So we're using this as a platform to try and get other people into the mold, as you said. You know, if you're Paul in, in Broward or you know, Jeanette in Palm Beach, and you have ideas, you know, tweet them at us or, or, or make a, a post on our Facebook page, and we'll definitely be sharing those resources out so that everyone can figure out, you know, best practice, so to yeah. speak. Yeah. yeah, that's excellent. So mm-hmm. even the approach you're taking is accessible. Absolutely. Um, which is great. I mean, because not only, maybe if someone's not connected to uh, social media themselves, odds are somebody in their family circle or the community mm-hmm. circle is going to be able to um, help them connect, them, connect yeah. that. So I love that. That's awesome. One more time, quick with the number to call. 888-825-TRIP. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jason, for being on the program tonight, for talking about this awesome program. Wish you so much success. Come back. Give us an update. I know it's a work in progress, but really appreciate having you on. Thank you very much, Brian. Enjoyed My it. pleasure. Thank you. Have a wonderful week, everybody. We'll see you next Monday. Thank you for listening to Connections. We hope you enjoyed today's program and discover new ways to bring creativity into your home or place of work. If you have any questions for our host, Bree, or today's guest, please email them at Bree at pbmti.com or call at 561-747-9944. Thank you for sharing the music with us. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of the station, its staff, management, or sponsors.